a bullpen meltdown by the Cubs as they led 8-0 and lost 9-8. Here we go. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. Today's episode is presented by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Cubs led 8 to nothing entering the sixth inning, but lost 9-8 to the Padres on Monday. And Sam, the bullpen is in shambles. It was a meltdown. It was a brutal loss, perhaps the worst one since we've had uh, this program. And at this point, I am going to just simply turn it over to you. Um. I, I'm going to preface this by saying I don't care if it's April, May, right. June, July, August, December, January, October. When you are leading 8 nothing in a Major League Baseball game and you lose, it is you are allowed to react any way that you want, okay? Talk let's re, Let's rewind to before the season. Okay. We had problems. We had concerns about the starting staff and the bullpen. Last season in September, this team did not make the postseason because their bullpen melted down. And even me, one of the biggest David Ross naysayers, admitted that a lot of their collapse had to do with the bullpen meltdown. There were injuries. We know that. The big move to to, to be made to rectify that was Hector Neris. So far, Hector Neris stinks, okay? He does. He looks horrible. And we're going to talk a lot about everybody. I'm not going to – I'm not going to – I will get everybody. Game okay? 10. Game 10. But he is one of the reasons against spending money on, on relievers because you just don't know how they're going to be. And, and and his underlying numbers weren't good. Maybe, probably he figures it out, but through 10 games, he's been absolutely awful, okay? I'll get the Quas thing out of the way. Okay. If he's on this team, if he's on this team tomorrow, it would be a disservice to everybody that watches the club, okay? That would be a big problem. Okay, it, it, it's ridiculous. I've said you don't cut guys after one bad outing, but you can't after three in a row. Goodbye, okay? An awful trade by Jed Hoyer. He stinks, okay? Then you get into Merriweather. In my, uh, opi- in my opinion, and I got heat on this when I said this before the game, by far your best reliever, in my opinion. And, and we didn't talk about it enough yesterday because we were high on the uh, Dodger victory. Right. But – but the, him now being out eight weeks with an injury I've never heard of in my life is a massive, massive problem, all right? And he was the guy that came in and made this a ball game. Council is to blame as well. For everybody that gets on me about Assad, he was not good again today. His results were great, and that's awesome, but I like to look at the process. The process wasn't great. He came out in the sixth, walked the leadoff guy, gave up two home runs, one of them foul, one of them fair. Then Quas was brought in. Why not just start Quas with a clean inning when you know he struggles the way he does? And then if for some reason Council was saving Smiley for today, I hope I hope Smiley throws six shutout innings and a win because you're probably going to lose tomorrow after a game like this. They usually count towards two losses. All right, and now let me get to the biggest story of the ball, and then I'll pass it over to Interesting. you. Interesting. There's one bigger? I'll oh, course. He's not a closer. His stuff is not good. Their guy that came in in the ninth inning is what a closer looks like. Shut down. There, there are times when Alzali's stuff looks like a closer, but it's not consistent. We have lost four games now this season. Two of them we've lost leading with our closer on the mound. We've also lost a game up eight runs, and we also blew an 8-2 game at home that we eventually won in the ninth inning. Yes. This bullpen 
through 10 games has been a historic nightmare of a mess. And when you combine that with the starting pitching injuries, this is a serious problem because we both know that this offense runs hot and cold and they're going to get cold at some point. And if they get cold on this road trip, we will be coming back two, three, four games under 500. This was an absolute disaster. It's a catastrophe. Everybody has some to blame, but they got to figure it out sooner rather than later. And if you have true aspirations of being a postseason team, I don't care what time of year it is, get on the freaking phone and start making some moves for teams that aren't winning. Because Albert Ausley is not a closer for a team that's going to make the postseason. He ain't good enough. He doesn't cut it. His stuff is flat. Home runs, home runs. The first one he gave up was to Jankowski. Now he gave one up to a guy that could actually hit him, and it was the most predictable thing in the universe. And the last thing I'll say is I do not care that the offense checked out. When you're up 8 nothing in the big leagues, the game is over. I feel terrible. There's multiple angles to this. One that I, I just feel like I got duped or I got deceived. Because quite frankly, just like it did with the Justin Steele injury, even with the Hector Neris signing, I do feel like the Julian Merriweather injury also retroactively makes the offseason look bad. I do. Because to call for a trade 10 games in is a fantasy world. That's what I, I, I drafted names after the Steele injury. Who are the rental starting pitchers who are now the rental relievers or even relievers under control that you could maybe even pay a high price for? That's not how this works. I would be shocked if they made a trade in April. You don't see that. Um, Who would sign off on that from the from the top offices to to trade your best reliever or your best starter before you what play your second homestand of the year? Um, I, I get what people are going to say and what you're saying about that element. Uh, I will be floored if it happened, but I just don't see it. Uh, we'll get to the internal options later in the show. Uh, this was a complete meltdown. I do think it starts with Assad five scoreless innings at 89 pitches. Uh, that seems like a good stopping point. Um, Sure, maybe some of this is questioning in hindsight, but uh, I think clean baseball more often than not, as we see with the Cubs already several times this year for a relief pitcher is a more ideal situation. Um, I did want to just verbalize Jose Quas's performance. He did record one out, uh, three hits, four runs. Luke Little, one plus. He was shaky. And Neris, really, even since opening day, I feel, uh, has been shaky. And his body language doesn't help either, for my liking. Uh, He did clean up the seventh, but even then was kind of a Houdini act. Uh, Eventually, Alzali gives up the two-run homer to Tatis to give the Padres the lead. And the Cubs go down with the loss, now six and four uh, on the year. It's crazy to have a game like this when, you know, we're starting to write write the show and um it completely does a 360 not a 180 but a 360 and uh you know we'll we'll discuss the rest of the series later and and who might be on the bump tuesday but uh you know the dawn of a long west coast trip and to come off a a huge high of a dodger series then go eight basically you blink and it's eight zero you know it's eight zero after the fourth uh, very disappointing to, to say the least. Um, what, what else from this game? Cause then we do have a lot. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. There's no, we're, we're not talking about That's any it. positives. There's nothing There's else. No, there isn't, there isn't the, any. The, the other thing, the other thing here, you know, you mentioned Mary little, weather injury is brutal. Yeah. And, and, but, but this is, this is September all over again. 
And it's I just sh- thought about that today too, Sam. I'm like, did they shake that? Because the fur, it, it did feel like it's so early now. Well, you, you uh, don't, you don't see, you don't have to worry about uh, it when you're when you're winning when you're scoring nine, ten runs. They are six and four, Matt. They've yeah. scored eight or more runs. What is it? Four times, five times already. Yeah. I, I, I mean, th- there are four losses. Three of the four have involved bullpen meltdowns. Now, they probably wouldn't have won the Saturday game regardless, but that was a meltdown from Quas, clear meltdown. Uh, and then the the meltdown from Alzali on opening night. That's a me- When your closer yeah. gives up a, a home run to a guy that will not hit one the rest of the season, it's a meltdown. Definitely and a game f- one and game and tonight were meltdowns. Well, and they had one that they won. That was a meltdown against Colorado. No, that's true. That's true. It was. It was tied. They could have easily lost. They've had three meltdowns in a week and a half. Well, four if you do include Saturday. It's unbelievable. And little, you know. You're right. So four of the ten games, that's that's awful. (laughs) Almost half the year. And I'm telling you, it happens every April. And and what will yeah. happen? What will happen is is they'll settle down. the The high leverage guys that were high leverage guys going into the year will be moved around. They'll put pieces together and they'll get it figured out. They will. They will get it figured out. I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about how long is it going to take and right. how many games is it going to cost you? Because last year we lost by one game. Every single game is precious. We now right. have our our first game of the year. Write it down that if we come up short. You're going to cite the date and the time of the game we lost that really, really hurts us. And and Well, and, I don't think it's a reach to write down March 28th, I'm yeah, sorry to and, say. And, and, so that's and the, two games this year out of 10. And the thing about it is, is it's, it's – it, the schedule is so hard right now. You know, you don't know. Mu- mu- you right. got such a break today. Darvish was terrible. He was really bad. I mean, this was a, it was a gimme. You're going to be seven and three. You're rolling. Yep. And and now, now now you're a little bit a prisoner of the moment. You are you are impending something negative moving forward. You are. Well, also ha- that's, a, that's a bad feeling. If they're up three two tomorrow, heading into the seventh, ha- I mean, nobody will feel good. I mean, you're you're. You're, yeah, you're, I haven't even been able to think about that. Who would even come in? You're totally, you're totally in trouble. And this is something that Jed Hoyer has just not. It's just, you know, the, the margin stuff, the leverage stuff. He hired counsel to try and be the band aid for this stuff. And and David Ross is laughing because guess what? You could have the greatest manager of all time when you don't have guys if to come pitch, in it and matter. get out. It doesn't matter. I'm going to make one more point before we go to break. I'm going to make one more point. This is really important. Everybody in the chat, I'm sure, is going to talk about, well, we should have spent more. We should have spent more. Let me tell you something. As more more important than spending, and I, I know I know people roll their eyes, but I always use the same organization as an example because they win 100 games every year. As much as the Dodgers spend, look who their eight and nine inning guys are. These are guys that they got from different organizations that were castaways. Evan Phillips was cut by the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Daniel Hudson was 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 given his baseball dead rights with his with his elbow and, were, and his injuries. They were kind of no names, those guys. Yeah. And they will be their eight nine guys. They have no Bruce Star Gratterall, no Walker Bueller. W- yeah. What do they do? They churn out guys. They get guys to be the best versions of themselves. We don't do a good enough job of that. We had some success with Merriweather last year. That was nice to see. But but it's not just about spending when it comes to relievers. Look at Josh Hader. He's off to a really bad start. Aroldis Chapman's off to a great start. It's kind of a crapshoot when it comes to those guys. But the great organizations, the great pitching organizations, figure out ways to take a decent guy and turn them into great pitchers. And we haven't done a good enough job of that. And it's going to be tested here over the next five months, because I don't see a way this team makes the postseason unless they get better internally. And what can they do internally uh, starting Tuesday before the game? We're going to go over those options right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by game time. Our great partner here. on locked on Cubs game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of major league baseball, which makes Getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the GameTime app actually go down the closer 
it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. The experience of searching for and then buying tickets on Game Time is simple. Plus, Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase because you can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Late last week, as we were debating whether or not to go to Cubs Dodgers, I went on a game time and was able to secure two bleacher seats for Saturday, just a beautiful day at Wrigley Field. And it was really an easy process with game time. I love their their map feature to really zoom in, okay, where are the available seats, how much money, um, and just a really fabulous experience over at game time. And for a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more with code first pitch. Terms do apply. That's code first pitch for $20 off only through April 14th. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with game time. Cubs play the Padres at 9.05 p.m. Central Tuesday, and you can hear every pitch of the Cubs' hometown broadcast on SiriusXM by searching Cubs on the SXM app. Julian Julian Merriweather, it's after midnight Central here. I might not be able to speak. Julian Merriweather is uh, on the IL. He was placed there on Sunday, shortly before Sunday's action against the Dodgers, and it was released on Monday, Sam, that he has a very serious uh, back injury. Uh, He is going to be shut down uh, 100% rest for one month, and then he will begin the baseball process. So uh, Taylor McGregor did report uh, of Marquis that Merriweather will be out at least eight weeks. Um, I do think he's a 60-day IL candidate and is potentially the best reliever in the pen. Uh, this is a major loss, considering that would be a June, mid-June uh, return date. Uh, don't have too much else on that besides uh, you know, what can actually be done practically uh, moving forward. Um, and such a rough situation out there. And I don't have great news with 40-man roster options, but... I don't the, care. The Cubs the do have roster. options, especially if they... 60 day IL Merriweather because then a 40 man spot opens up for a couple of these dudes that are pitching really well uh, for the I Cubs. So the 40 man options who are a triple A Iowa that I believe in no way, well, there's one name in no way, shape, or form should come back. And at least in this situation, in this moment in time, and that's Keegan Thompson. The name that you could sell me on, but I really think in my heart of hearts in no way, shape, or form should come back right now is Hayden Wisniewski. Those are the two options on the 40 man. Those are the those are the two options on the 40 man who's at triple A. Now to midnight. I got three names who aren't that really I think could come up and let's let's see. You know, we're we're in let's see mode. Not great. We're in survival mode now, starting rotation and bullpen. So that's great. Two of the most important pieces of a baseball team. Two non-40 man pitchers who are doing really well right now. One is Sam McWilliams, a right-hander. Seven and a third innings, five hits, four runs. And here's the kicker. One walk, 13 strikeouts. He's given up four runs and seven and a third. That's really well. What is that in ERA? In the sixes? Well, I'm looking at the strikeout to walk ratio. Okay. Um, I don't know if all those runs are earned. Uh, That's uh, my my, my bad. Uh, The other one is Thomas Pannone, who's pitched for Craig Council before. Ten and two-thirds, four hits, no runs, uh, two walks, 11 strikeouts. So McWilliams and Pannone, one's a righty, one's a lefty. Carl Edwards Jr. returned to the organization late last week, but so far is only pitched in one simulated game so not sure in terms of readiness if a Tuesday roster move is for him uh, but perhaps that's in the cards uh, soon so look for McWilliams or Pannone on Tuesday 
Uh, if not them, it's going to be Wisniewski or Thompson. Um, yeah, I'm just going to breeze past that. That's your thing. I, I can't absolutely. I, I, I can't take my mind and, and put it there after a loss like this. I've been right. reading some of the comments. A lot they of got to hey, bounce it, back tomorrow. Hey, it's April. Hey, it's April. Hey, it's April. Hey, it's April. Guess what? You blew an eight nothing lead. I promise you. Anybody will tell you it doesn't matter the date when you lose an eight nothing lead. Now I'm going to name you some guys right now. Well, and what I, we were saying, I guess I would just challenge to to that to that uh, sentiment would just be, did you say hey it's April entering the game today? Did you say hey it's April when they just won two out of three against the best team on the planet? Now because it works both ways. Hey I, it's April. You beat the best team on the planet, two out of three, had a chance at sweeping, or hey, it's April, they blow an eight nothing lead. It's the same. So what I think, what 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 exercise I believe we should do before we we get into it is I think we should go through every reliever right now, and and I will ask you, you give me a confidence on a scale one being if he comes in with a one run lead, you're okay, assuming well. the game. No, let me just tell you. Well, this one, guarantees that I'm not going to sleep, but go ahead. What one one is if they come into a game with a one run lead in the in the seventh or eighth, you're turning the game off because you know it's a loss. Ten oh, is gosh. ten is you know a roll this Chapman 2016 type of stuff. Okay, okay. let's just do oh. it real quick. Great. I won't it's a name great everybody. Scale. Okay, so let's start with Adbert Alzali. Uh, quickly, let's just go quick. Six. Six. I'm at a three with him right okay. now. Okay. Wow. He's been awful. Hector Neris. Two. I'm at a three with him as well. He's been awful. Those are your two best guys. Jose Quas, zero. Let's save one. that one. Well, zero wasn't on the board. If the Cubs have a lead uh, tomorrow, you will see El Monte in the game. What is your confidence level with him? Two. I'm at about a three, four with him. Um, Mark Leiter Jr., who, by the way, was used Saturday in a four-run deficit, which caused him to be unavailable today. That made no sense at all. Go ahead. I'm at about a seven with MLJ, as long as he's facing left-handed hitters, okay? Luke Little. (laughs) Funny. Everyone can laugh, right? It's funny. Luke Little, I would say a three or a four. I'd say I'm at about a four for Luke Little, okay? Uh, uh, Okay. (laughs) Drew Smiley, I'm not counting him. Five. He, yeah, he wasn't put in leverage. Who who have I forgotten? I don't know. Palencia, three. Well, he just got added. I'm going to say a one. Yeah, so there you go. There's your bullpen. We're 10 games in. The, the bullpen is, uh, it's not a reach to say at all the bullpen is in shambles. It's not, just not. And even if you just produce a usage report card, because that exercise right there proves it. So let's say they're up. Let's say they're up somehow tomorrow, four two with nine outs to go. Who comes in? Almonte probably. Almonte, Almonte to to who would close? Lighter, right? Depends who's hitting. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Tuesday's game because the Cubs will wake up. They'll play another game. And uh, we're going to talk about that perhaps begrudgingly next. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. Pick more or less on two or more player stats and then watch the winnings roll in. Baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players to the diamond in your prize picks entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs. Take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry. Prize picks is really simple to play with your entries taking less than 60 seconds to submit, turning $10 into 1,000, with just a few taps of your screen. Download the prize picks app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 by using code locked on MLB. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. America's number one fantasy sports app. All right. Well, something I was thinking of as I was reading the prize picks copy was for as excited as I am about the offense, even after a brutal loss, I can't, I, I could no longer, Sam, and you tell me if I'm going too far. I could, I could not right now in this moment in time, I could not take this team seriously. 
No, I can't. There, well, well, and how, guess what? I enjoy watching the offense, and get and they're good. Well, because but I you, cannot take a team seriously when you have a whole third of the pie pitching just out the door. <laughs> you're not serious. It's gonna be a long. We. It's gonna be a long. It's not West a serious Coast team. Game. No, and the, and like I said, they're gonna get it fixed. It's but, a shame to reveal that hours after the weekend, but it's true. No, no, but it's it's a true thing. Look who we just talked about it, and and it's and not by a the serious way, team. And by the way, Jordan Wicks, Imanaga, and Javier Assad have done an unbelievable job patching together the starting rotation. I mean, you're in patch together mode right. from the jump. You know their exactly. results. Exactly, they were. We talked about tell, survival. Let me tell you this: they will get this figured out. But how many losses is it going to cost them? And and yeah. is it going to come back to haunt exactly. them? At the end, like like it is. That's the one question. Before we get into Ben Brown tomorrow, I just want to make one more point. Is he starting? I don't care. Okay. Another awful defensive performance from this team. I know it was a tough play, but if I have to listen to how great Dansby Swanson is every day, please make that play. It went under your glove. Talkman in right field lets the ball go by him. The defense. Let me tell you something. The Cubs are six the and four. Has been. The fair, Cubs are so. six and four. If you want to be a glass half full guy, the Cubs are six and four. Their pitching and defense has been, has been as bad as I've I could possibly imagine. They are six and four because they are crushing the ball and putting together A plus ABs, uh, time in and time out. And the defense is the is really the surprise there. Uh, so we don't know if Ben Brown's starting, or maybe we do. Uh, I can't open up other stuff because I have a computer from the 90s. Uh, Joe Musgrove is on the mound for the Padres. Musgrove has struggled in his first two starts this year. Gomes, Hap, Swanson, Morell, and Talkman have all done well in their small samples against Musgrove. And quite frankly, uh, the Northsiders really need a bounce back game. Get to seven and four, you you feel better. But what's even the path to that? Um uh, I, I guess that is a reason to uh, tune in on Tuesday. We'll be live after Tuesday's game against the Padres, and that's going to be sometime around midnight central. <laughs> Remember, uh, Tuesday's start is actually 25 minutes uh, later than Monday because of national television. Uh, and you might be saying, well, 25 minutes, what's that? Well, it's a lot. Um, it's a big difference, actually. Well, so. with the way I think the game's going to go tomorrow, we might be live in the seventh or eighth inning of a, of a route. These games usually have ways of, of, of costing you the next day and the day after. So, Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Lockdown Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes, and we'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube. Smash the like button for the algorithm. Quick reminder, okay, the like button really is to support the show. It's easy to, to press dislike because of the title or because of the result, but please press the like button to support the show and leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcast. Well, no sound drops today. I suppose uh, that's an indication of how it's going uh, for the Cubs right now, not even in the close here. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy, and this is Locked On Cubs.